Let's talk about what's new in Redshift 2026. And one of the cool things is that the new RS Sun and Sky has the ability to create clouds. And not just static clouds, it can create volumetric clouds. Which, it's really cool, and it sounds way cooler than it is. Now, I went into it with low expectations, and it is pretty cool. It's good. Um, I'm not blown away by it. It does seem very practical, especially for ArcViz and things like that. Um, especially, like, if I combined it with that City plugin that I have from Florian, this would be fantastic, right? Okay, so, basically, the way it works is you have your little sun and sky here. That works the same as normal, except now we have the ability to create clouds. So let's go ahead and click that. Nothing really happens at first, but you do have the RS clouds object here, which is really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this is looking like in the render viewport. Because we need to. Now this is a big mountain, uh, just for scale. We'll add a guy in there, plop him in. So see, he's, he's pretty tiny right there. Now this is like classic, I don't, I don't understand. So here we are, like, again, without the clouds. It's just insanely bright. Let's do non-physical intensity. Okay, good. So we've got our mountain, we've got our sky. Now we say, create clouds. Ta-da! And you can see it actually cast shadows on our object, which is really nice. Now these aren't volumetric, but they are pretty cool. Uh, so what we can do is it actually creates an RS cloud object, which is nice. Go in here, you can change the seed, which will totally change, you know, obviously, the layout of the clouds, which is really cool. And then we can also adjust the density. I like having these shadows here. Just instantly, like rather than having to do a giant area like Gobo, you can now use this, which is fantastic because the RS Sun is a really good light, but it was always very limited. Still limited somewhat, but better, okay? We can adjust the density of our clouds, make it wispy, make them real dense, real shadowy, whatever. Very simple. Coverage, good. Down, this is great. This is fantastic, right? I want this, this is great. Now we also can adjust the altitude, which doesn't quite work like I'd want it to. I want to like just bring this cloud layer all the way down into the ground so I can just literally have a cool ground fog. It doesn't really work like that. It's kind of like in this own realm above everything. And then there's thickness, which is a little confusing. Uh, it's the thickness of the layer of clouds basically. So if it's real thin, all your clouds are just gonna be really thin wisp, like paper, like a texture map. So adding some thickness to it is going to stretch out. Think of it like scaling of EDB up, basically. But then there's also scale, which is going to allow you to you know adjust the scale of everything, as well as the detail scale, smaller detail, more thing. Bigger detail scale, softer, puffier clouds. So big scale, nice, soft, fluffy clouds. Pretty cool. Now, here's the other cool part about this, right? Because that's neat. And you know you might be wondering, OK, so where are they? Like, where are they? Are they actually here? They are, they're way, way up here, which is cool that they actually are there. So here's the cool part, RS clouds. We go to advanced. This is where we have even more control over our clouds. We can actually do a toggle switch here, which toggles on volumetric clouds. There we go. And instantly they look bad, right? I don't know why but they do. Uh, hex tiling is gonna help uh, with repeating stuff. I think that's pretty good. Uh, and then now we have the scattering and multi-scatter effect of this, and as well as the horizon blend, which just basically fades out some of those background background uh, things, so you don't have such a harsh horizon line. Um, think of it like a clamp. Uh, and then the cool part here is, before we got dive into fixing our volumetric, let's just undo that real quick. We can actually just offset this. So yes, you could animate this and finally have like wind blowing, or you can actually just do it in the Z or the X. But there's also wind, skew, and speed. It is frozen. And C40 has crashed. Okay, rebuilt the scene here. And basically what we can do in the advanced is we can do a wind skew. Uh, so you can see it kind of blows them. And we can do some wind speed as well. We can change the detail phase and the wind direction. So now we can kind of animate this and move it around. So I think if you were to click through this, you might get some animation. I'm not completely sure yet. Um, we might need to animate it that way. So now you can animate these nice time lapses and shots of exteriors, or just you know use this to light your interior, right? And use a portal light. This will be fantastic just to add that natural cloud movement. I think it's just really good. And so we got volumetrics here. Those look like poo poo. Let's fix them. Uh, basically, uh, let's just lower the depth of them. It's going to make them way 
more intense, but if we raise the depth of them, it'll make them wispier. And we can make it kind of kind of more transparent or darker, or you can make them have crazy colors, um, but we'll do somewhere in here. Oh, uh, we also can adjust the scale of that. We definitely want some anistropy uh, to be underneath, a little lower. Uh, we can say like two, and that's gonna make them whiter. And another big thing you need to do when you're doing clouds is inside the redshift, is you need to go to combined depth, go to the volume setting here inside your redshift settings, and crank that up to like max, basically. It's gonna take longer to render, but it's gonna make your volumes look so much better uh, and make those those uh, things work just that much better. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. I mean, that's basically it. I mean, we've got, you know, that's really neat. And let's make it more like this. Right, I mean, that's kind of cool. That looks pretty. That's neat. Um, it's very cool, very cool feature. I love clouds and making clouds and stuff, and, and I love this, I do, I think it's great. But here's why I'm not like so blown away by it, and I know I keep comparing things to other things, but I mean, you have to, and they're both op viable options, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here is an old Engine 5, and here is a plug-in that is $40, $50, called Ultra Dynamic Sky. Okay, 50 bucks, software's free. Boom, plop that in, and now we've got clouds, right? Neat, we fly up here. We don't really have it, you know, they, they, boom, there. Volumetric clouds, real time. They look pretty good, right? Uh, here's what else we can do with this same plugin. Obviously, it's changing the time of day and everything does affect the way they work and everything, but it's all real time. It looks great. Uh, we can come in here and adjust the amount of clouds and things here. We can tell it to do different fog, different times of day. We can animate the daytime. We can change it to full cinematic quality. We can adjust the altitude of these clouds. And you can just see like, you see what I mean? Like this, this is the same thing, but in real time and on a bigger scale and better and I don't know, man. I, this is why I'm not like, wow, but okay, it looks beautiful, it looks great. And you can come in here and add like an extra layer. Uh, I think it's second, two layers, here we go. Yeah, so now we can have two layers of fog, of clouds, and now we've got like a wispy layer and a top layer. And playing around in real time, you just can't beat that. And it moves. And you can adjust the wind. All right, but yeah, so, I mean, you come in here, you crank up the wind intensity. <laughs> so it's just tough to, to compare the two. Let's grab something. But I mean, like, tossing just a, a, a kit bash asset in there. I mean, instantly I've got, have, you've got something cool here. And like, I don't even have like volumetrics on. Uh, let's turn that on, the volumetric fog and stuff that's in the dynamic weather. So, I mean, when Redshift can do this, I'll be impressed. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. I don't know. I honestly, like, I... The last video with the update and and this video, the both are like they're good, but I you can tell that I'm not happy. And and don't and take that with a grain of salt, all right? Like that's just me personally. I don't need that to reflect on you. I'm just kind of being legit with you guys, and I'm not super impressed. Um, but that that doesn't matter. I'm not the only client for C4D. Um, it's whatever works best for you. Um, but I mean this this is what I want to make. So we're we're, we're tempting right um and if i could make this in c4d i would but it just i'm not trying to persuade you one way or another i'm just trying to put it out there and i am you know just saying my feelings i'm not sponsored by anybody or anything i'm not affiliated with anything i have it is in my best interest to promote c4d in the most positive light possible because i have a lot of c4d content um i do think c4d is great i also think that c4d needs to be better um, so, 
this RS clouds are cool, but until my RS clouds can do this, or like give me ground fog that can do it or anything. Come on. I don't know.